Thank you so much. I'm Laurel Richardson. I am the Director of Community Outreach for the Charcot Marie Tooth Association. Hopefully you're in the right meeting. Um, Gary, I've invited Gary Shepard to co-host with me tonight because he and his, he leads the New Mexico branch and Gary's been a, a branch leader for years and he and his branch members put together this amazing gadget list of things to help CMTers like me and like you um, with our, you know, hands and gadgets that make sort of those daily tasks easier. So um, I credit Gary and his New Mexico branch with putting together this amazing list and I thought it would make for a wonderful meeting because people are often asking about gadgets and and what might make them their lives easier so I'm going to turn it over to Gary to say hello and introduce himself and if there's any history with this um, presentation that I didn't touch on we can touch on that okie doke hello everybody and welcome from New Mexico our land of enchantment and um so I'm going to talk about our gadget document, but let me tell you where that came from right quick. Um, a number of years ago, we had a presentation by uh, University of New Mexico Physical Therapy and Occupational Therapy Department. And when the professor came out to visit us, she brought some stuff with her. And she said, well, I brought some things that we thought might help you all. And so we thought, oh, well, that was pretty cool. Over the next year, we started collecting things, uh, not necessarily, I don't, I mean, um, information about things that our New Mexico members thought were helpful to them. Now, I should give you the caveat that not everything is going to be helpful to you. We're all different. We all have different needs. And sometimes there may be 10 different things you can go out there and buy uh, that satisfy a particular need. Now, one thing that is really important to me, because we want this to be a living document, is for you to let me know, and at the end, we'll give you my email so that you can uh, send me information, send me a web link about where you bought something or a picture of an item or whatever it might be, and we will add this to the document and then continue to grow and help other people. Right now, it's already about 19 pages long, uh, packed with stuff. So our process is going to be this. Um, we'll bring up a page. Now, this is PowerPoint version of what's in the PDF document that you will eventually get. Now, we decided by the way that we're going to wait a few days for you all to send me things that you think will be helpful. And I'll them to the document and then Laurel will ship it out to everybody so you get the very latest uh, version. By ship he means email. Email, yeah. <laughs> ship by electronics. Okay, now what we'll do after each screen is I'll stop and suggest that if you have anything to offer, if you want to mention something, suggest something or whatever, you can speak at that point about that screen. Now if you're on a computer, the easiest thing to do is just hold down. Woman this is just like uh, this is just like the old button on a walkie-talkie in days of old. When you're holding down the space bar, you can speak, and when you let it up, you're muted again. That's the easiest thing to do if you're on a computer. If you're on a laptop, I mean a, an iPad or something like that, then what you'll have to do is click on the um, button in the bottom left that says to mute or unmute yourself. Then we'll go on to the next one. And we are gonna to try to keep to an hour. We're already five minutes in. So Laurel, if you want to bring up the presentation, then we will start from the top. Now these are not in any particular order. Um, they're just as people gave us things, we added them. But when you have a PDF document on the computer, of course you can search it or you can print it out and glance through it. So I'm gonna wait until we go full screen on this, which Laurel is doing now. I'll keep admitting people as they come in. Okay, so Gary, is it up? Nope, you've just got oh. the point screen. You need I, just, I just have the what? See it now? Go to slideshow at the 
See, I have something blocking mine. Hang on one second. Let me see. I can get rid of that. Called um, slideshow. And then it should say. Play. Yeah. How's that look? Uh, still the same. Oh, gosh. It's showing go, do, from, do from beginning in the far left hand side, the little screen with the arrow on it on the far left hand side. Just you know the file. It's showing up on my end, though. Hang on one second. So do you see anything right now? No, we're just getting the regular PowerPoint screen that you would edit from. OK, so let me go to slideshow, you said, and from beginning. Yeah, there you go. Click on okay. that. So I'm clicking on that. And, and I, I see it. Do you see it? Uh, no, I think we just get the regular PowerPoint screen. Uh, try pressing F5. Uh, I don't have an F5. Hang on. On your computer keyboard? Function 5? No. Well, we had it before, folks. I uh, know. Well, okay. we can see it this way. Can't we just go on with it this way? Yeah. Oh, so can. you can see it. Okay, but no, we Gary can see it, be... but not in full screen. Oh. But that'll be is okay. It, we can live with that. Is it slideshow? Yeah, I tried that. So it's when I pull it up as the host, I can see it in slideshow mode, but Gary can't. Then I think that's okay, though. We can still see it. So just go to the next one and we'll just mush on. All right. Okay. So here we go, guys. Uh, so I'm just going to go through these. And if uh, Laurel has things to say, she will drop them in. Uh, a lot of us may, as we get more into CMT problems, have trouble typing on a computer. I use the nuance dictation. It's not perfect. And you have to do a lot of corrections. And of course, if you're on an iPad, for example, you've got the little uh, dictate microphone. So if you use these kinds of things, they will help you. If you still want to type, there's a Microsoft split keyboard that may be of help to you. And if you really have severe problems, you could use a stylus uh, to tap on the keys. OK, going to something radically different, Peely and Orange, somebody suggested this, and it turns out to be just a clever thing to do. If you just kind of make a score in the orange or whatever fruit it is that's got a peel, turn a spoon upside down and slide it around and it'll remove the peel. So that's good for anybody. For an ATM, sometimes if you put those cards in, it's difficult to get the dang things out because they don't stick out very far. So sometimes you can take your hands, you know, one on top of the other and pull them out together with two fingers if your fingers are not very strong together, which mine aren't. Or you could carry yourself a small uh, pair of pliers or tweezers to pull them out. So those are just a few starting items. And does anyone have anything to suggest or talk about related to these items before we go to the next screen? We'll wait a few seconds to give you a chance. You can also use a chat box if you're shy. Gary, um, this is Beth Dorn. And um, regarding the ATM, um, you know, the newer cards have the, where you don't have to put the card in. That is correct. Well, that's helpful. Yeah. And then someone from my um, branch was telling me that they put a small um, punch hole in the upper left-hand corner of their card and they they ran like a little loop through it so that they and they put their finger through it and they can just pull it out. That might work, but then if you're going to a well, as you said, some cards have got uh, an RFID chip, so you just touch, you just touch the uh, screen with it, uh, but some don't. And if you put it in a bank machine, it takes the card all the way in, so you don't want to have anything sticking onto the card if that's what you have to do. Like right now, my bank card does not yet have an RFID chip. Okay. So I have to actually physically insert it and it goes all the way inside the ATM machine. Yeah, and it's so, particularly hard like when you're at the gas station and you have to pull it out quickly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you can't get hold of it. 
Right, exactly. So I, I guess what I would suggest you do is where you can uh, contact your, your credit card company and say, hey, do you have the ones that are contactless? Which is what Beth said, where you just touch the card onto the screen or onto the place where you would put it in and then it recognizes it. Like that happens for me at the gas station. So I don't have to put it in. Good idea. And I'll add, make a note here to add this about the RFID chip, because I think that's good. And maybe people don't realize that's the case. Hang on just one second. Let me make a note. Okay. If no one else has anything, let's move to the next one. Okay, plastic bags. These are the bane of some of our existences. Uh, I have found that if you use the bags with the sliders on them, rather than the ones you have to pinch together, that works at least for me a whole lot better. And some of our people said that works better for them. But if you've got flat ones you have to use, you can just lay them down flat on a flat surface and uh, use a, a spoon to mash the two things together to seal it. So that's... <laughs> Buttons, buttons, another bane of our existence. There are a lot of devices. Uh, I, this has been something I have to have because I just can't manage buttons as my thumb gets weaker. And there are some lists here. Don't worry about writing any of these places down because you're going to get the document that has everything in it. And if you go to the PDF document, you can actually click on the link in the document when you get it and go straight to that website. So if you want to go to this arthritis supplies one that's listed here on the screen, uh, that can be helpful. Now, by the way, the one that I have got also has a little hook on the bottom, uh, on the bottom of it so that it can hook into the hole in a zipper if you have trouble grabbing a hold of a zipper. We're gonna talk about zippers later, so uh, we'll do that. But I'll just mention it, that my particular buttonhole device has got a hook on the bottom that will allow you to help with zippers. Anybody have anything before we move on? I have actually, Gary, uh, called the pocket dresser. It's like a little uh, pocket knife. This is made by someone with CMT. They're about 20 bucks on Amazon. So you pull out what you need, like a, sh a, sh a button um, thing. This is for zippers. And this is the one I use every day for jeans to get the jeans. This thing, oh, this thing is you, great. Jason. It's made with uh, uh, good metal. I've had this thing for about 10 years. And you go, go to Amazon, look at pocket dresser, it's 20 bucks. And it, this thing works great. And it's great. heavy duty too. It's like the Swiss Army knife. Yeah, exactly. It's got everything for zippers, buttons, everything. Right. Thank in you. It. I'm going to definitely add that. It's got a little uh, 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 strap here so you can hold it if you need to. And it's got a thing you can put in your pocket. So this thing is great. Wouldn't okay. be without it. Thank you. Thank you. We'll add it. Excellent. We'll, we'll get that information with the document. I, I have a question. Yes. How do you deal with zippers that don't have the little hole in them? Okay, hang on to that thought. We have a whole section on zippers later, okay? So just hold that thought and we'll come back to it later. <laughs> Promise. Okay. It's, it's Anita Miller speaking. I have a question. You yes. talked about plastic bags. So I find like the plastic containers for spinach or leaf, leafy vegetables. It's so hard to open the lid of those plasticized cartons that vegetables come into. I totally understand. Mm -hmm. Something that you might consider is uh, maybe a, a pair of needle nose pliers, mm -hmm. especially ones that have springs on them that spring mm -hmm. open rather than you having to push them open. Uh, okay. Might be of help. And if somebody comes up with a better idea, please email me. What kind of pliers was that? Say again. Beetle, beetle, beetle pliers. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. But make sure you get the ones that will spring open. And when I talk about scissors a little later, I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. All right, 
Moving Thank on. Thank you. Uh, uh, Gary. Yeah. Oh, wait. John? Oh. Uh, John. Scotty Redfield. Yeah, I just had one comment about shirts. When I have shirts dry clean, and I got to do those little buttons for the collar. That, that buttoner, like you were talking about, I have the same one. And once you learn how to use it and get those little buttons through those little holes, it's a real blessing. It's so frustrating. I, I can't tell you how many times I screamed at that button. I think it's uh, more like impossible without something to help you. In fact, I'll, I'll, be, I'll go so far as to say shirts. I will even pre-button them with the button hole device and use them like pullover shirts rather than trying to button them after I already have them on. So that could work for some people. So another thought. Okay, now this is a biggie. And we're gonna hit this a couple of times, instability in the bathtub shower area. Now, one of our people said, you know, walk-in tubs are really expensive, which they are, they can be thousands of dollars. But she thought, at least for her, it was a very good investment. That's something you would have to decide for yourself. For some people stepping over the edge of a, a normal tub, like the one on the left-hand picture is very difficult. So some people have replaced those with uh, low-edged showers. My shower is low-edged, so it's not a problem. If you can't really do anything about that because you're stuck with what you're stuck with, you could use something like the, um, the kind of thing you see in the picture where you can do an easy transfer into the, into the bathtub. So that might help you. Now, one thing that I did that was very valuable, and you'll see pictures of it a little later, is I took out all of the towel racks in my bathroom that I use, and I traded them for uh, grab bars. So grab bars make just dandy towel holders, plus there are things there in several sides of the room I can grab onto if I need to, if I need to pull myself up or whatever it might be. So something that you might consider is doing that. Uh, I just had a carpenter come in and install them. And uh, then my wife said, these are so great. I want all the ones in the other bathroom done the same way. So basically, we don't have any towel bars anymore. They're all grab bars, which you can buy at Lowe's and Home Depot and you know online, wherever you want. Um, so of course, don't rush and stay focused so you don't fall. Obviously, falling is not a good thing. And uh, non-skid mat, uh, uh, non-skid non mat, try to say that three times fast, uh, are always good that will stick to the bottom of your uh, tub and make it. Now, there are also one that I found that I thought was interesting that is uh, really soft. It's not just a mat like you see at Walgreens. Uh, it's actually thicker. And I might Think about putting a picture of that in there too. I found that somewhere actually in Hawaii when we were there. Uh, and that seems to have worked really well. But a lot of these items you can find from this NC Medical Outfit. You can find them on uh, and just by going to um, Lowe's and Home Depot in some uh, areas or Amazon, whatever. Anybody have anything else to add on this suggestion? Okay. Gary, this is Beth again. Um, I got from Amazon some little suction cup uh, grab bars for, and I use them for travel. Um, okay. You know, like when I go to other people's homes and they may not, or in a hotel that may not have it. And, um, and they work great. Okay. I have I regular like grab bars in my own, in my own shower. I understand. But but I think that is a wonderful idea, Beth, especially for travel. But I would like you to send me a link to what you think works really well, because you have to be careful with all these suction cup type items. Yes, you do. They can, come on, they can come loose. Yes, I will send you the one that I got that, that I'm really happy with. Okay, I think that is just a dandy idea because we travel a great deal and very few places have that to offer. Right. Okay. Uh, difficulty with utensils and tools. Uh, you can just use foam wrap. There are a lot of foam wraps you can get that are adhesive on one side, and you could just wrap around something as much as you need, 
or there are things such as you see in these pictures um, that uh, you can buy commercially to hook on to silverware um, and the thing like on the little pie uh, plate. So that could be helpful. Oh, I just saw Donna Berry's note. A cheap shower option is a walker. You're absolutely right. That's a mm -hmm. very good idea. So I'll mention that as well. So give me just one second. I'm making notes. Okay, anything else on this particular screen? Now we've got another screen that talks about pencils and pens and things like that later on. This is just something to adjust uh, utensils. Just a minute. I didn't know yes. what was that pie plate thing that you go back. Yeah. Uh, what, what is it that? is a thing that hooks on the edge of the pie plate so it doesn't scoot off when you try to push it around. I don't know that many people would need that, uh, but if some people with severe CMT might have difficulty. Uh, I have one of those. And do you find that useful? I know, and it's good for like vegetables or beans on your plates. And so you can just scoop, you know, you use your you know, spoon or your fork and, you know, move your you know, spoon or fork to the, you know, the little, you know, you know the little, you know, border thing right. and, and you get your, you know, small things like that. It keeps you from of the, them off the plate. Yeah, and, instead of like the corn or vegetable where you're going off your plate and you know, that will stop it and you can just scoop yeah. it up on the side. Very good idea. So it might be of helpful to some people. Okay, let's go on. Packages, oh, packages. Modern packaging is another bane of our existence. Getting the darn things open. Well, there are a number of devices <clears throat> that are will either cut open in fact, sometimes you feel like you have to have a hacksaw to get into some of these things that you buy that are shrink wrapped in plastic. There, and, and the plastic seems like it's it's you have to have a you know a bandsaw or something to get it off. But there are devices, make life easier, has got several different kinds that can help uh, get these kinds of packaging open. Auto gas cap. Uh, it turns out we had a car. We don't have it anymore, but for some reason, it was very difficult to get the gas cap off. And there are devices that can help you to get the, the things twisted. Now, we have a no, new car that's much easier to get off and it isn't a problem. But for some people with older cars, this could be a, a, a help. Anything else before we go on on this screen? Yeah, I might add that uh, we just, bottom new buick it doesn't have a gas cap at all it's just oh, got a hole okay. so <laughs> well that solves the whole problem doesn't it? May, maybe they, maybe they're thinking of us okay i have a question um yeah yeah our car too doesn't have the gas cap anymore and that's ford i think all ford cars do not have it okay um but um getting the gas in to the vehicle when you take the nozzle off uh, uh, and then you put it in and then you have to hold that button and that has not been working for us and then also um you know how there's that little metal thing that you can yeah to click it and then it will just stay put but to get it there to stay you have put, to squeeze it, it really hard right and and that's just doesn't work. Okay, that, so I don't know if that, anybody I, had a device or an uh, workaround for that. If anybody comes up with something, please let me know. That's a, a very valid point. Uh, as your hand gets weaker, it's harder to squeeze. So um, if anybody finds something, please let me know. Okay. Uh, all right. Jar opening. Oh, jars, cans. These things are really difficult. There are all kinds of devices. I actually have several of these myself. Uh, the one on the far left is nice because it easily adjusts to different kinds of things from like the lid on the top of a, of a uh, half gallon of um, soda or something like that to different kinds of jar lids. I really like the one on the far right. You unscrew it and it, it, it will, go to a, a, oh, about almost a three inch across 
lid and then you just twist it and it tightens up on the lid and then you move the handle to open it. The only thing that might be a negative to that if you have weak hands is it might be hard to hold the jar that's underneath the thing you're trying to move. So I get my wife and say, here, hold this jar and I move the handle on the top and it pops right off. So these are different kinds of things that you can look into. If anyone has any that they have found that they thought are really fabulous, uh, again, send me links and uh, I'll add them to the list. What we're trying to do is add things that people have specifically told me were helpful to them. Mm -hmm. Now I've got another one that's not on here that is like a strap, uh, a loop strap that you tighten and it's supposed to go on any kind of size, but I haven't found it to be all that effective. So I didn't include it. Anything before we go on? You know, Gary, if you have problems with your hands and you can't use like the, the one that's the Kuhn Recon, the gripper, they have mm -hmm. some that um, attach under your cabinet. Oh. And then you- and then you take the jar and you put it on there and then you know you turn it from there. So it's a little less cumbersome. Let me make a note. I think that's an excellent idea. I have seen those. If anybody knows of one that they've got that they specifically think is great, please let I have this know. one. Okay. Well, and this one's really cool. It has a little slot so you can use your fingers to make it bigger or smaller. And then it has a hole so you can use your hands to pull. And okay. you, can, um, you can open all kinds of different jars and different lids and even the, you know, like the safety cover things for like new jars or bottles. You know, okay. when you first buy them, you have to take it off and you can even take, use this part and get it off and you can pull the plugs out of the wall with it and hold a nail and hammer it. Little of everything. If you could send me a link to where- It's we... from um, Arthritis Supply. Okay, but if you got, can send me a link to that specific item, I'd appreciate okay. it. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. And uh, anything, um, oh, go ahead, Rachel. Hi, I, when I can't get the lid off a jar, I take a bottle opener and use the flat side usually and um, open, do it as if I'm going to open the top of the, of the lid. And you mean, you mean punch I, a hole in it? No, use the flat side, not the pointed side. Okay. And it will break the suction and then you can use a jar opener on it okay. to get it open. Well, that's I kind of like your second one, Gary, like like the, the blue one. Uh-huh, exactly. I, yeah, I have one of those and I find that it works quite well. Okay, great, thank you. Yes, Carol. Um, yes, yeah, I was just gonna um, say that uh, for prescription bottles, oh. Yes. Um, that's always been a challenge too. And we have said to the pharmacy about, um, giving us a, you know, a different type of lid and that has helped. Unfortunately, CVS's lid now is just a pop-up, which, um, when you use all your might, it pops off, but then all your pills go flying. So, um, try yeah, the red it, one you see here on the screen. Yeah, I need to see which one that that red one looks like that yeah. might be good for it. Yeah, that's exactly what it's intended for. Oh, that and, looks uh, perfect. Uh, I have had people tell me that it really helps with pill jars. Okay, so it's pill not just for like an over the counter Advil. That's good for when the pharmacist sends you something. Well, it's supposed to work on prescription ones as well. It looks gr okay. Great. Thank you so, so much. You bet. All right, let's go on. Hang on, it's coming. Oh, nope, okay. There we go. Uh, okay, we've already talked about this. Um, in fact, I think one of you mentioned about using a standard beer can opener to release the pressure. Uh, I understand that. 
Um, loss of finger strength, that's true for all of us. The, if you have a collection of different size pliers, that can be a real help to have around. But like I said before, make sure you get ones that are spring open, meaning that there's a spring that opens them for you. I mean, we're like crocodiles, kind of. Crocodiles have <laughs> great strength closing their mouth, their jaws, but they can't open them. That's why they're easy to catch. And that's true for us sometimes as well. <clears throat> we, can, we can squeeze maybe fairly well, but we can't open back up. So make sure whatever tools you oh. use or scissors or whatever have got springs on them that will push them back open. Okay. Um, cards. There are different devices to hold cards, dominoes and stuff uh, standing up. And I, I, the one that's here in the yellow, green picture is just dominoes, but I've seen these for cards as well. Uh, if somebody finds one they like, uh, send me a picture. And I've got an automatic card shuffler. We have a lot of friends we play cards with. And so I've got this automatic card shuffler that's got batteries and you just put them in and zip, it's done. And they don't go flying all over everywhere when we try to do it. So uh, that might be of help to you. Okay, coins and pills, hard to pick up. Well, you might be able to slide a playing card, a business card, or maybe even a post-it note. You can slide underneath the item that's on the, the ground or the cabinet or whatever to be able to pick it up. Or maybe you've got some, what they call doctor's forceps. That's kind of like pliers with a curved end. Um, that point down. And another idea is to put your pills in a bowl and pick them up with a spoon if you're trying to get several at a time of something. That's, those are just different kinds of possibilities. If anybody has found anything fantastic for this purpose, uh, let us know. Uh, drop coins at the drive-through. I guess this isn't much of a problem anymore because I don't think most places want to deal with coins anymore, especially during the pandemic. Uh, but you could carry a cup in the car to put in the, uh, like the bin at Walmart or whatever, and say, put my coins in this cup, please, uh, instead of just throwing them in the bin and you have to try to scrape them out and they fall on the ground or whatever it might be. Okay, moving on. Pastry cutting. Sometimes it's hard to cut pastry at, and... Um, hold it at the same time. You could cut on a cutting board with a pizza cutter, or one thing we found is to get a pair of kitchen scissors. Like if you're trying to make a pie with a crust on the top and you need to clip around the edge and just use the scissors to cut around the edge. That works really well. Uh, smartphone buttons. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Most of them are not too bad these days, but there are phones that you can buy that have gigantic buttons on them uh, if that's something that you need in your specific situation. I just got a new iPhone 13 and it has real big buttons on it, so it really hasn't proven to be a problem. Okay, continuing. Glasses. Oh, glasses, my goodness. It's and especially paper cups, like if you go to McDonald's or something. If you're are weak like mine, it's really hard to get around these things unless you can use two hands with them. But there are several things to consider. Well, one at home, one thing I changed, I kind of got rid of all the glass glasses because I was always dropping them on the uh, ceramic floor and breaking them and went to these uh, mugs. I actually found them at Chili's and I asked, where did you get these? So I went to their restaurant supply house and found them. Uh, you can get them on Amazon in different sizes. And uh, if you buy them from a place like what's on this link that's here under number one, uh, they're a lot cheaper if you'll buy a dozen. So I just buy a box of a dozen when one wears out or gets chipped or something, uh, toss it out or recycle it or whatever. And uh, I just think needing handles is, handles are a good thing. Um, Laura found this item called Yeti that's in the picture in the middle. 
and there are things that you can set your cup in uh, or your glass and pick it up with a handle. And then the one at the bottom, a variety of things that are adjustable, which I thought was pretty cool because there you have different kinds of things. Maybe you've got uh, these ones that fit in your car to take a thermal thermos jug type things. Um, and this outfit has got different kinds of handles uh, that you can use to um, put around different kinds of stuff. And I've also seen one, I don't know if you uh, buy half gallon of milk, I'll go try to find that. But I had a long time ago, this kind of box like thing with a handle that you can set your half gallon, a uh, square gallon, a uh, half gallon of milk in, and it's got a handle rather than trying to pick it up. Now, of course, if you use a gallon, you've got a handle on it anyway. Anything about this before we move on? I think these are some things that can really be of help. Certainly are to me. I, I, live, I live by my Tervis cups. They have the handle that they can come off, or I have some that don't have handles, but I have one of these around me all the time. I like them because they have the lids, because I'm always knocking my drink over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this way it helps with the spill as long as it's not open. Yeah. If it's, if it's closed, it's really good. But, you know, I never knock it, knock it over when it's closed. Of course not. I only knock it over when it's open. And of course, it'll fall with that side down. Naturally. So, so that's where it pours all over. But, well, Murphy, um, is, uh, Murphy is always with us. <laughs> that item. But I, I, I mean, I've even bought a, a sets of these for my sister as gifts because she has CMT2, also not CMT2. Okay. Um, I and and um, I think they've just been great for all of us. Great. Send me a link, please. Okay. Then I'll look yeah. them and put them to the, uh, the test or put them in the document. Zipper. We talked about zippers earlier, and some of you had some things to say about that. Um, <clears throat> you can open a large paper clip and use that to make it easier. There are, as I said, some buttoning devices have a hook. Now, someone said, well, what if my zipper doesn't have a hole in the end of it? Well, you might just, in your pocket or purse, carry a miniature set of small pliers. Again, spring opening so that you can grab the zipper uh, with the small pliers. Then there's something like what you see in the bottom right. Uh, again, that assumes that you've got a hole in it. Um, and I guess all of those things in the right-hand side assume that you've got a hole in it. Um, and then the one on the left, again, all of these things assume you have holes in them. So I don't know any solution unless you all can come up with something other than a small pair of pliers to get a hold of a zipper that doesn't have um, that doesn't have a hole in the bottom. Okay. Uh, now, actually, I don't. I thought I had sent. Did I send you the thing about the mag zip, Laurel? Oh yes. Uh, hang on. Oh no, I guess it's not in there. Okay, well, I'll just mention it, and I'll add it yeah. in the document. There's a new product out there called MagZip that is supposed to make this whole problem go away, quote, unquote. Now, the only pro well, it's a new product, and when I first put it into the uh, document a year or so ago, it was not out in the market. But supposedly now, some clothing manufacturers are making them with this thing called MagZip. So uh, you might want to, to look for that and you'll see it in the document if I put it in there. You can buy, <coughs> excuse me, just the zippers themselves, but that means you've got to have a, uh, yourself or uh, somebody take out your zipper and put in a new one and that may or may not be something you want to do. But that's a possibility. Okay, moving on. Toilet too low. I'm sure you all have seen the items in the top picture where you can raise it um, with a, something you set on the toilet. And also there are arms you can put on it. Uh, of course, I mentioned the grab bar before, which I have in the bottom picture. So these are things that can help with that problem. Now, we actually replaced our toilets a while back with the ones that are kind of like jet flush. 
And so we, um, they're higher, they're taller to start out with. And so uh, the ones you see like in an airport or something are low and they're, I don't, I find them hard to get up from unless you've got something you could grab onto. But uh, the newer toilets all tend to be taller to start out with. Maybe they're thinking about all of us people, not only with CMT, excuse me, but people who are older and have that problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gary, Gary, yes. Some of the, um, uh, Delta has a toilet paper holder that is also a grab bar. And, oh. it, and so it's, um, it's sort Send of, me a link. It's sort of aesthetic. Oh, that's great. Send me a link. Okay. That's interesting. I'll add it. That's a wonderful idea. See, you guys are clever. It's not cheap, but it's like 85 bucks, but it nothing it, is nothing that helps us is cheap. Yes. We I might agree. as well get prepared for that. Yes. Okay. Uh, moving on. Combination touch screen and ballpoint pen. I've seen these and they're really nice. Um, you can use them on your touch screen so you don't get fingerprints all over them. So that's just kind of a stylistic thing. And it also has an LED flashlight. So that's just kind of a handy little thing. I don't know if it's particularly special for CMT, but I thought it was kind of a nice thing to have. Toothbrush and flossers. Uh, there are things such as you see there that will fit onto a, um, on a toothbrush. And of course, you can use things like your automatic toothbrushes. I have an Oral-B that, of course, is large to start out with. It's an electric one that's very helpful. And I don't think we made the item that I sent earlier. Let me see. I don't guess it's on this picture. Uh, try to hold this up where you can see it. Mm -hmm. These little flossers like this that have a handle which you can get at uh, Walmart or CVS or Walgreens. Maybe you can see that good enough. Uh, and it's in the document. These are very handy because I just can't manage with string floss. Maybe some of you can, but it just doesn't work for me. So there are things like the blue one you see at the bottom middle of your screen uh, that might work for you um, or something like these, which are throwaway. And these are double double um, string flossers, which is why I really like them. If I could get it where you can see it. Well, anyway, it's in the document. Okay, moving on. Keys. There are numerous things out there to help you uh, when just turning keys sometimes is hard. There are things like the red item that fit over a key to just give you something else bigger to hold on to. And then other things like the blue one that can hold several keys and give you a hand. Okay, I think that the one at the bottom, uh, active hands, okay, thank you. I will put that in our list, Thomas. Um, you've got, you're capturing all of these uh, comments, aren't you, Laurel? Yes, I'm getting a lot of them. And then also um, the in the chat box, we'll have a copy of that, Gary. So anything that's put into the chat box in terms of links and notes, we can grab those as well. Okay, great. For now. So if you've got something at hand and want to put it in the chat box, feel free. I think we've already talked about a lot of the things at the bottom. Uh, thumbs are thumbs, at least for me anyway, with CMT is a big problem because it's very weak, as you probably know and grasping things is difficult. Um, there are a couple of thoughts down here um, at the bottom that you could look at and see if you think they might be of help. Uh, and of course, we've already talked about a number of things to help you with when you don't have the finger strength that you'd like to have, which most of us don't anymore with CMT. Okay, next. Okay, again, same old thing. Oh yeah, the thing that's on the right hand <clears throat> is the thing that I saw for a, a half gallon milk carton. It's very similar, but it's square on top instead of round like the one you see there. So these are kinds of things that can attach and maybe be of help. Okay, we'll go on. 
Now there is a bunch of different kinds of stuff that you can either attach to pens and pencils or you can buy uh, pens and pencils that already have a fat thing at the bottom that you can grab onto much more easily. And there's just so many of these around. Uh, this is just a few suggestions. The ones on the right-hand side are some uh, which are uh, for people with a much more severe CMT issue that you really need something very, very uh, special. But these are a lot of things that NCM, uh, NC Medical can provide. And if you found anything that you specifically like for yourself, again, let me know. Oh, Y pins, thank you. Good idea, Karen. If you've got any particular brand or kind that you like, ship them off, uh, ship me off a link so that we can find something that uh, we know somebody might find them useful. So a Y one is just kind of like you grab, well, it's kind of hard to describe but I'll put a picture of one in. Let me put that a Y. Okay, moving on. Oh, door handles. I actually had all the doorknobs in our house changed out for ones like what you see on the left. And they have worked just so well for me. Uh, now that was not cheap to do. But over the years, it has paid for itself multiple times over. Or you, if you've still got some finger grip, you can do something to just make it easier to hold on to, like the one with the hand in it on the right, or something that would go over something that's there, such as what you see there. And there are some of these, I believe, that they make for people who are traveling and maybe have difficulty in a hotel or something. Although an awful lot of hotel now is have gone to the handles uh, rather than the doorknobs. I think those are kind of disappearing. But if anybody, again, has something they particularly find helpful, please let me know. Again, next slide. You'll get these all in, I'm not gonna spend time on this, but there are several catalogs like Make Life Easier in the Box and the Right Stuff. These are really excellent. Now they're again built not just for people with CMT, but for people with any number of problems like arthritis for older people or whatever. I have found these to be really useful and uh, I am always happy when I get these uh, catalogs to look through them and see what I might've uh, not seen before that are good. So you'll get all of this in the document with all of these links and new ones that you have told me, I will add as well to this. Okay. Oh, scissors, one of my favorite topics. You can use the electric ones like in the middle, or this is what I was talking about. I don't know if it's gonna work with my screen the way it is. But as you can see a little bit, it's spring loaded. So it pushes itself open and I just push it closed. I would not be without these. These came from the right stuff and it's the picture that's on the left. I've got these in several rooms around the house um, because they're the only ones I could use. Now, my wife doesn't, she doesn't have CMT uh, or issues with her hands. She doesn't particularly like these spring-loaded ones. She likes the regular old-fashioned scissors. But these are, I think, are fabulous. The black pepper ones in the middle I've got, and they work real nice for some things. Uh, for other things, you just want to be able to use good old-fashioned scissors. The same thing goes, like I said, with pliers or any kind of tool like um, needle nose pliers or diagonal cutters or any of these kinds of tools that you have to squeeze. If you can get them with a spring that pushes them open, it's going to help you just so much. I can't tell you how much. Okay. Coat zipper. Oh, here's the magnet. Here it was. <laughs> Sorry, I Gary. <laughs> I forgot all about it. Well, I already mentioned it, but here sure. it is. And like I said, um, it's going to start showing up in clothing now, and it's a lot easier to use, supposedly. And you can buy the zippers now separately. And I will put in a link to this item uh, that will tell you where you can buy them if you really had some garment that you just loved, 
but you really wanted to have an easier to use zipper on it. Okay. Pay somebody to change it. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this somewhat with grab bars. I have grab bars in my uh, shower, just a diagonal one that goes from uh, up to down in a diagonal. But in this picture, if you really need something to be able to pull yourself up, uh, I, I find that the diagonal one on the side works fine for me, but this is another, uh, another possibility for you. All right, shower seats. We kind of mentioned this before. There are numerous kinds out there. I actually have one that's like on the right um, and in my shower. And I find that they're really good. Now for tall people, I will warn you that shower seats, when you raise them to their highest level, I have found can be unstable. Mm. I found this one that it, with the crossbar you see on there, that is meant for somebody that's 250 pounds, which I am not, I'm quite a bit less than that, thank heaven. And so, uh, but the point is raised to its highest level because I'm six foot one, it's a lot stronger and it's not gonna be as wobbly. So you might think about looking for that with ones with the crossbar like you see on it uh, here for stability. All right, continuing. I found this on the left myself, it's called Mopnado. Um, and basically you put your mop in it and mush it up and down and it spins around and picks up the detergent or whatever. And then you put it in the right-hand side and press up and down and it spins it out. And it's a microfiber mop. It really works well. I will be honest with you. We have somebody who cleans, but we also have two dogs. And consequently, I find myself having to clean myself sometimes. And this thing has just been wonderful. Uh, it's so much better than any kind of squeeze out mop that you might get. And so I commend that you can go look at it and see if you think it's worth it. I actually, our uh, cleaning lady went and bought one for herself and said, I'm going to take this to my other clients, uh, use it there. If you need to roll around to clean things, you can use what's like a, almost like a doctor's stool. And I've got one of these and it's very nice and very stable. And um, a back brace. Consider a back brace if you've got any kind of back issues. I've got lower back issues, and I find that the Mueller back brace is very good. If any of you have back issues and you found a back brace that's better for you, tell me what it is, and I'll add it to the document. Okay. Cards out of the wallet. Our, um, um, who told us about this? Um, Gina. Was it Gina Sweeney? Yeah, Gina Sweeney told us about this. This is something that you can attach to a card because sometimes it's hard to pull it out of your wallet. Mm -hmm. Of course, this means this can't be a card that's going to have to go purely inside of a machine like an ATM that you have to put it inside of. If you've got one with a chip where you just hold it up against it, it'll be perfect. Or if it's one that you can just slide in part way. And someone mentioned how hard it is to pull out. Uh, this might be something you want to look into, but it is something that attaches to the card. I will tell you, I have a hard time getting my cards out of my wallet because they just wanna go down in there and I can't get my fingers around them. So this, I haven't tried this, uh, but Gina said that she found this and I'm gonna give it a go, at least the ones that have a chip in it and don't have to uh, go all the way in. Gary, I have a, um, <laughs> you know those little, I think they're made by 3M. They're actually a little office supply. And like, if you're signing documents, they'll, they have like a little sticky part and then the other end has a colored. So it identifies where yeah. they are. So, the tabs. I, so I have one of those on my um, driver's license. Because I, I used to travel a lot for work, and that made it oh. really easy to just pull it out. And then okay. you don't have that same issue of, um, of running into it, having to attach it, and not being able to put it into. Okay. I know what you're, exactly what you're talking about. Index tabs. Yeah. Uh, the only possible problem, at least with my wallet, it wouldn't be strong enough to pull it out. 
it would uh -huh. pull right off. Uh, so it depends on how easy it is, because uh, those aren't really meant to be used in this fashion. Oh, no, no, and I have that. to change them, okay, you know, occasionally. But um, the well, I another another thing you might even try is putting one on each side back to back. Yeah. Um, and so you have two of them that gives you twice the blue power, if you will. Right, right. So that might be something that could be helpful. I don't know. But that's a good idea. I'm going to add that. Uh, it would not certainly work on my wallet because I have a hard enough time getting it out when I get a hold of the darn things, which is why I think the one from um, uh, from Gita might be a good, a good solution. Well, uh, we are going to... Uh, Wind it up. Are we within our hour? I don't know what time it is. Oh, yeah, we did great. You did great, Gary. I oh, was just being I talk, fast. I talk fast. You might make a note just of my email address, Gary at shepdesignassoc.com. Sorry, it's kind of long, but go ahead and write that down. And any of the things you've got that we've talked about, and you said, Oh, I have this, or I know about that, or whatever. Send me a link, send me a picture, email me whatever you can, and we will add them to and then we will um, and then we will send this out. I don't know. We'll probably give you at least a week to um, to come together and uh, with your ideas and send them out to me and we'll update the document and see where life takes us. And then uh, Laura will ship it out. So hey, with two minutes to spare. Yay, team. Hey, Gary. Yes. Here's uh, one wallet that they have out now that actually pulls out your cards. Ooh. Cool. I have the two. Yeah, it's the See? sacred. Oh, you're so cool. Send me a link. I want, in fact, I'm going to buy one as soon as you send me a link. John, and what's the it. name of that? Uh, the company is Exter. I will look up the link right now as we speak. I don't know how to share. And put it in the put it in the chat. S T R. In the chat. And then it's anyone can also email me with information if you have any afterthoughts, and I can get that to Gary, of course, to be added to the document, the live document. Oh. Yeah, this was great. I mean, we got some wonderful ideas from you folks. Thank you so much. <laughs> some of this was at least a little bit helpful to you. Yes, and Gary, thank you so much for leading this effort. There is so uh... I got it, John. Thank you. They have a whole different styles and everything else, leather and non-leather. You can spend as much as you want. <laughs> That's great. Okay, sure. Laurel, if you'd ship me all of the chats. I sure will. It's a deal. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. I'm sure you've had long days, and there were other things you could be doing, but we're so glad you decided to spend some time with us this evening. So thank you. And as always, reach out if you need anything. Everyone should have my email address. Um, and we're here to help and support you. Thanks for being part of our community. And thank you, Gary, for hosting with me. Thanks. Thank you. Thank Great you, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a great night. Have a good week. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.